When you think of the French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte, do you think of images like these? Or do the more heroic images like these come to mind first? If I may guess, quite some people probably think of him in the latter way. Despite Napoleon being an authoritative leader who was responsible for the killing of millions of people. And the reason for that is that Napoleon understood the concept of propaganda. Meaning that if he would commission the greatest artist of the day to portray him as a powerful, confident and thoughtful leader, he would probably be remembered as such. And perhaps none more famous than this series of paintings by Jacques-Louis David, showing how he heroically crossed the Alps, leading his army. In stark contrast to reality, which looked more like this. Napoleon was the French emperor battling all over Europe and the dark lines on this map from 1809 give an impression how large his empire was at some point. While Napoleon was a successful general, he was not always victorious, which you can see by the areas that are not part of his empire, like England, Russia and North Africa, which he all tried to add to his empire. Jean-Antoine Gros painted this combination of a portrait and a battle scene in 1797, showing Napoleon as a young, strong, decisive and confident leader, an image he based on observing Napoleon during the Italian campaign. And just keep in mind, Napoleon was only 27 years old at this moment, and already a respected general in the French army, leading them on the invasion of Italy. And while this work was commissioned by Napoleon's wife Josephine, it was also the moment that Napoleon understood that he could use these kinds of paintings to his advantage to create a positive image of him to the French people and to the generations after them. Two years after this painting, he would become the first consul of France, effectively leading the country, and in 1804 he crowned himself as emperor, a scene that has been captured by Jacques-Louis David in the coronation of Napoleon, an enormous work with all sorts of details that do not match the historical facts. That same year, in 1804, Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres painted a 34-year-old Napoleon as a calm and stable leader with his characteristic hand inside his waistcoat. He is about to sign a decree that basically says that one of the cities France conquered in currently Belgium is going to benefit greatly from being part of France. Ingres modeled this work after a similar style painting by Jean-Antoine Gros, from 1802 and it was Napoleon himself who had commissioned this work and he had ordered several artists to create replicas of it to be distributed throughout his empire. A lot of paintings of Napoleon show him in his role as the general of the French forces. This is a painting from 1810 by François Girard entitled Battle of Austerlitz December 2nd, 1805. It depicts the battle where the French army defeated the Russian and the Austrian armies. The French general Jean Rapp presents the prisoners, including the Russian prince Nikolai Repnin Volkonsky, to Napoleon who is surrounded by his other generals. And here is Napoleon on the battlefield of Elo, which would result in some 50,000 dead soldiers. The French government, however, launched a competition for the best painting depicting Napoleon's visit to the battlefield. This version was the winner, showing the compassionate side of Napoleon as the leader of the French. The painting by Gros is downplaying French casualties, instead showing mostly Russian dead and wounded being tended by French medical officers. Here is another such painting by Charles Meunier of Napoleon returning to the battlefield after the battle ended, showing somebody who deeply cared about his soldiers. Most, but not all French artists during the life of Napoleon depicted him as a hero. This is Watteau's painting from 1799 of the Battle of the Pyramids, and as this battle was lost, there is no heroic depiction of Napoleon. However, this work was painted at a time that Napoleon was not as powerful yet. In the years after, he became the sole leader of France and he had a firm grip on the art that was produced about him. He made sure that even for a lost battle, he could be portrayed positively 
has seen in Gros' painting from 1804 showing how Napoleon takes the time to visit his wounded soldiers during his battle with the Egyptians and their allies. This painting was actually commissioned by the French state with clear propaganda purposes in mind. There were a bunch of horrible stories about the actions of Napoleon and his army during that battle floating around, and this was an attempt to counter those negative stories, though more objective historical sources make no mentions of the actions of Napoleon in this painting. Napoleon tried to control even some historical details, like in this painting of his coronation, where he made sure his mother was included prominently in the audience even though his mother was absent because of a dispute with her son. As you understand, the French mostly painted Napoleon as victorious, like this painting showing Napoleon at the head of his troops triumphantly entering Berlin through the Brandenburg tour after the victorious battle of Jena and Auerstedt in 1806. Or Napoleon accepting the surrender of Madrid in 1808, and it may not surprise you that these types of paintings ended up in the most prestigious museums in France, and most of them are actually still in those museums. While the French artists from during Napoleon's life mostly depicted their supreme leader in all his glory, foreign artists obviously did not. Look at this British cartoon from 1803 showing Napoleon in a fury over relations between France and England. Or this one, showing Napoleon seated backwards on a donkey after his exile. The difference, however, is that these works were not commissioned by the British state, while in France the state, Napoleon or people from his circle would actively commission works to make Napoleon look like a hero. And in a climate where artists who did favors for the government were awarded and could make a great living, there was an implicit motivation for aspiring artists to portray Napoleon in the most positive light possible. The paintings made during his life by foreign artists are probably biased a bit by the information they could access about the battles they captured, but they are relatively more objective like in this painting by William Sattler showing the devastating Battle of Waterloo where Napoleon suffered a decisive loss. Here, there is no special place for Napoleon. And of course, opponents of Napoleon enjoyed portraying him after his defeat, like this painting by the British artist Charles Locke Eastlake, showing him as a prisoner after his abdication after the lost Battle of Waterloo. After the death of Napoleon, artists had more freedom to portray him like they wanted, although the most famous paintings of him filling the French Museum still set a precedent for French artists. In the second half of the 19th century, Jean-Léon Jérôme painted a couple of works about the failed mission of Napoleon to conquer Egypt. He chose to depict a more thoughtful Napoleon, here in front of the Sphinx, while his army is in the background and here in a more contemplative mood while scanning his surroundings. And this one shows him seated on a camel. Notice that Jerome does not depict him necessarily as a hero, but preferred a somewhat more historical and objective approach. This famous work was painted in 1840 by the French artist Paul de la Roche, showing Napoleon after his first abdication after the fall of Paris. It beautifully captures the contrast between his depressive mood and his military costume and the decadence of the room in the Palace of Fontainebleau. Here are some more battle scenes that were painted by French artists in the decades after his death. You can see how he is depicted as the general of the French army, but seemingly in a more objective way than the scenes from during his life. These French artists did choose to depict battles in which the French were victorious and so Napoleon generally still appears as their leader. Artists abroad clearly took a different approach when depicting Napoleon, focusing on the losses he suffered, like this painting from 1851 by the German artist Adolf Norton, portraying Napoleon's retreat from Russia after a devastating loss. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the role of Napoleon in art history. 
If you want to learn more about his life, recently a movie about the rise and fall of Napoleon was released and it's pretty intriguing. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to be alerted when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.